Today's scripture is all of Esther chapter 4. Esther agrees to help the Jews. When Mordecai learned that all had been done, all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and threw on his sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city, and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in a sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was a great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's young woman and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to the clothed Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hatash, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend to her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai and to learn what this was and why it was. Hatash went out to, out to Mordecai in the open square of the city, the front of the king's gates, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree of shooting Susa for their destruction, and that he might show it to Esther and explain to her, and command her to go to the king and beg his favor and plead with him on his behalf for, of her people. And Hatash went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hatash and commanded him to go to Mordecai and say, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death except the one to whom the king holds up, the golden scepter that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come in there to the king in these thirty days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said to him. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. And Mordecai told to them to reply to Esther, do not think that you and the king's palace will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And you who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to go to Mordecai and say, go gather all the Jews found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days, day or night. I and my young woman will fast as you do. I will then go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Then Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Today's theme is longing to be together, and our scripture focus is Esther chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days night or day. I and my maids shall also fast as you do. And after that I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So, you might need a little bit of background on the Esther story. So, in Esther's time, a lot of Jewish people were not living in Israel. They had been exiled, like, displaced. So, Esther is one of those Jewish people. And in the kingdom she's living in, the king gets mad at the queen and has her sent away and exiled. So then he holds a beauty pageant to find the new queen. Esther wins the beauty pageant because she's beautiful, but doesn't tell the king that she's Jewish. But the king only cares that she's beautiful. They don't, he doesn't really care about who she is. So, Esther's family was not in this country. So Esther's family wasn't in this country, but she was raised by a cousin by the name of Mordecai. And Mordecai, um, Mordecai was this brave, cool man who was also Jewish. And he tells the king and some of his advisors, hey, there's this plot, and they're trying to kill the king. So the king's like, oh, thanks for telling me that. I'm going to honor you. You'll be in my book. This book that has all the people who've helped me. So, because Mordecai is Jewish, he does not want to bow before the king. And this really, like, takes off this guy named Haman. I think the 
It's either Haman or Haman. It's Haman. Haman. I'm really ticks off this guy because he's like the king's assistant. And he tells Mordecai to bow down. And Mordecai is like, no, I will only bow before God. So then Haman's like, hey, king, anyone who doesn't bow before you should die. So Haman puts together this decree that says, we're going to kill all of the Jewish people because they don't bow down before the king. Well, Mordecai finds out, and he goes to Esther, and he's like, you have to do something. You are in this position. As queen, you can tell the king that this is wrong. So, even though Esther's queen, she can't just go see the king. So she throws like this big party. And while the king's there having fun, she asks him for one favor. And he, and he says, sure, you invite me to this cool party. You're the queen, you're my wife. And she goes, save my people. Well, the king is like, you're Jewish? I had no clue. And he's also surprised that Mordecai, who his name is in like this book of special service, was the target of Haman's plot. So he, the king, goes, you know what? This decree's garbage. It's gone. A new decree, we should kill him because he is not being a good person. He's going to go to jail till he dies. And that's Esther. That's what she did. She's super cool. And the reason that she was brave enough to do this was because she had the power of community behind her. She had all of the Jewish people in this country fast for her and pray for her. And she also knew that God would be with her to help protect her people. So, here are some things that you can think about today. What communities are you a part of? And what role do you play in those communities? How do other people in other communities impact you? Um, and how do you think God connects people? And I want you to also think about what communities you are a part of, whether they be small, like friend groups, whether they be large, like your, your town or your city or your state. And also just like, there's communities that overlap with each other. Think about how that affects you and how you're part of them. And also think about if there's any communities that you feel excluded from. And then think about why you might feel that way. So take a moment of silence and imagine or reflect on the worries that you hold in common with your peers, the people around you. And also reflect on the hopes that you have in common with these people too. Lift those up as prayers to God. And I'll have a part of the closing prayer. Our prayer for today is thank you God for the power of community and for blessing us with this camp community where we can find friends, learn about you, and grow together. Amen.